My dear brothers and sisters, يَقُلْ حَمْ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَمْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَقُولُ كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَقَالَ عَلَيْهُمُ الْأَبَدُ فَقَصَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Ya Allah, beautiful verse in a lovely chapter in which the mighty remind us about an important fact that our hearts can easily become hard that we could be desensitized from being affected about scenes that could easily provoke our emotions. And that's exactly how the Muslim Ummah, after 154 days of brutal war that is in, with the intention of genocide and eviction, civilians from their own land is happening in front of the international community leadership. We've become in that stage where our hearts are not anymore affected with the graphic images of what we see in social media. We've become desensitized to the point that we just try to avoid it so that we will be able to enjoy the meal we're about to enjoy in a short time. We try to avoid it because we feel helpless, we feel powerless, we feel there's nothing that in my power I can do and therefore I can just let it go because I am fatigued, I burn out after 154 days. That's how we feel, we need to acknowledge it. Well, how are the people of us feeling? That's a good question to ask. How are they feeling? Living this nightmare, living this brutal war, being, being conspired against by the, the international community leadership, including the most powerful nations on earth. How they feel is something we can imagine, but might not necessarily be able to understand or live it. Because it is difficult to imagine. Not only there is a brutal war, not only uh, uh, guns and bombs are used against them, evict them from one location to another location, and be living in one particular area where it is designated to be safe, and then eventually they get bombed in, in safe locations that's supposed to be schools or hospitals, or, or even uh, the location where they were told to, to move to, to feel safe. To make even things worse, now they are using another weapon against these civilians. Against these powerless, helpless children, mothers, elders. The latest women of which to prevent them from being able to have the necessities of living, which is food and water. To make things even worse, they have orchestrated a fake in use similar to the 40 babies being beheaded to stop Amrwan from funding the refugees of us. This is unheard of. This is unheard of, of how is the ethics of the international community leadership operate. It's unheard of. Don't these people have children? Don't these people have feelings? Don't they understand that what they are doing is, is, is contributing to the slow dying of infants, newborns, and children and elders and women who are poor nursing their own children? After 154 days, there are approximately 9,000 women have been killed in us. And this is an underestimated number, but this is what they were able to count. That means there are 63 women killed every day in us. 63 women killed in us every day. Among these 63, there are 
verse 37. 37 of those are the mothers. You know what that means to lose a mother for a child in a war zone? That means the child has lost hope of life, both psychologically and physically. 95% of women in Gaza, unfortunately, are without proper food to be able to care for their own children because they pass on that food they're able to give if they have it to their own children because this is how they feel their sacrifice to their own children. We've seen it on social media how newborns are dying as a result of dehydration and as well as a result of the lack of the basic necessities of their living nourishment, which is health. This is the reality. We're, about, we're, we're living in as we are only a few hours away from the month of Ramadan. The month in which supposed to bring forward into our conscience the meaning of taqwa. <laughs> And the real, real meaning of taqwa would not be by humbleness and dressing in certain way or bear with the face of hair for the brothers, but it is a deeper meaning that's supposed to bring to your life a different understanding of how you should be living your life as a conscience. أَلَمْ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن Ramadan should be helping us to get that feeling of khushur to Allah Azzawajal as we reflect and contemplate on the ayat of the Quran. Ramadan is not only abstaining from food and drink. It's not only abstaining from pleasures of this life for certain hours so you can make it up in multiple of the words. The whole idea of abstaining from food and drink is to feel what's it like for a hungry person to go through this hunger and thirst knowing after certain hours that person would not be having the same privilege of being happy. It's not that they will be waiting for a few hours and after that they indulge in binge eating. No, that's not the case for them because there's nothing available for them. They already have been exercising fast. The whole purpose of turning to the masajid at the end of the day of fast and line up in Tawawih is not only to help digest the heavy meals we have consumed at the break of the day of the, at the sunset, but rather to give ourselves the chance to be able to absorb, to reflect and contemplate on the ayat that will be recited among our ears. So these ayat will change, will make the difference, will make us feel that we are real believers, believing in the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal, allowing the Quran to change our conditions. That's the whole purpose of the month of Ramadan. If the month of Ramadan did not go by, and you did not feel the change of the condition of your heart, not necessarily the physical conditions of your physical appearance, because that's what we aim for during the month of Ramadan, to lose, to lose a few pounds, a few inches. That's not the purpose of Ramadan. If you are still standing in the soft and the recited ayat of Allah Azza wa Jal is not allowing the tears to come out as a result of the khashiyah, to the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal, know that there is something missing in your Ramadan. The compass is off. You need to put it back again on the right direction. You need to work on your state of Iman. You need to reevaluate things so that Ramadan will be a real tool of change for you in your life to be able to achieve that time. I know that our government have virtually announced restoring the UNRWA funding, but we haven't seen that officially in the public uh, uh, stance. There are no clear indications that this is going to be the case. Our responsibility through the advocacy work 
to continue to push through the advocacy groups we have, whether it's at CCM or Justice for All, so that these advocacy groups will be pressuring our government to hopefully help them shake their conscience and, and wake up to what is happening really in the international community. Let's stand behind those politicians who have taken the courage and the responsibility to stand for justice. We are not here in the political you know, games, but there are some politicians also here in the local area of Hamilton who have taken upon their responsibility to defend what Nakba is, go to Nakba.ca and engage into the discussions and see how we contribute into educating the general public and passing a bill about al Nakba, which is something unfortunately now is being planned indirectly, politically, in the region, so that another catastrophe will be happening to the Muslim community in Gaza. Well, we appreciate the gesture to open a port in Gaza to allow humanitarian aid to be arriving to the region, and establishing hospitals uh, in, in ships. We wonder why the superpower that have supplied multiple times, hundreds of times. The ammunition for the brutal Israeli war machine is not allowing the borders of the land to be open for free, for free flow of the food and, and medical supplies to save the lives of children and civilians. There is no standard. There are not, there are games that are being played indirectly and we will not buy that. The people of us are saying, we are rooted in our land. Nothing is going to make us leave except the departure of our wound from our body. They have fully understood this ayah and they're saying nothing will prevent us from leaving our land. And we will say, as a Muslim community around the globe, we will stand behind you and advocate for your cause and say to the whole world, you will not be able to evict the people of Gaza from their land. You will not be able to, to take a masjid in Aqsa away from the Muslim Ummah because this is a for us we believe in. May Allah is the mighty. Help us this upcoming Ramadan to be conscious, to be from those who will be living this ayah. Whose hearts have become hard and cruel as a result of abandoning their own spirits. Quran is our life, Quran is our heart, and Quran is what will be the nourishment for our siyam at the end of the fasting day.
اللهم لا تجعل شهر رمضان يصف الينا الا وقد فرجت هم وغم وكرب امه الاسلام ما يعرف بغزوه رب العالمين. يا الله we pray to you, supplicate to you, we not allow the month of Ramadan to come by except that you have alleviated the suffering of those who are suffering from earth, يا رب العالمين. Especially the people of Gaza, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us from those who will return to you with their hearts. Ya Allah, make us from those who will be able to attend the khushua, whose hearts will be interacted with the Quran during the month of Ramadan. We pray to you, supplicate to you to restore justice and peace on earth, Ya Allah. And to make us from those who stand in justice and for justice, Ya Rabbi Alami. And we ask you to help us to be able to pray on us with the Allah, Sahabi, and Almighty, and the Fatah, and the Shaykh, 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 and the Shaykh